you got you a major vexation in store for you. You know Orv's pa, old man Swishley? You knowed he was in town? Well, we was all of us out for a couple of cold ones last night, and Orv's pa carrying on like an angry junkyard dog that you has been screwing Orv. And guess what? Today, he is planning to meet with you so as to permanently straighten you out good. Dang it, not that man again. Rightly, yes. And I see him coming just as I speak. So I am going to quickly disappear. Joe Elvis, say, I got a bone to pick with you. I hear it already. You claim I is screwing your son Orv. Shucks now. I wouldn't use that word exactly. One of your boys we was with last night must have put it to you crudely. I wouldn't say someone's getting screwed in such language. But I do think it is an all good time that you make Orv like co-band leader. First of all, in all due respect, sir, this is not a band we have us. This is a country western outfit. And regularly, we like to call it a group. <sighs> well, boy, makes no dang never mind. Call it what you want. But anyway, a guy rings it. My son deserves more status around here, for sure. With all due respect, how do you figure? Look. For openers, don't Orv have more seniority? Wasn't he or not with the outfit several months before you sauntered in? I don't see it as a matter of seniority, sir. More like desperation, see? When I came in, the group was in tatters, all but packing their bags for home. Lung, the former boss, he had plum crazy ideas. He had them going as the tuxedo lads. Imagine that. He had them trying to play cool jazz as he called it. All dressed up in fancy get up like they're city slickers or something. Why, you can't play no jazz with no ukulele. Well, I will admit. See, they was on their last dime of talk, talk of throwing the towel in. Then they see me. They decide to kick Lum out. Then they start pleading with me like all oh, get out to take things over. Well, they knowed I had done plenty of stage all over. I was familiar with a lot of people in the business. I could get plenty of bookings, as long as they agrees to get back to their roots with straw hats and good old country music. So as I sees it anyhow, it had nothing to do with no seniority item. Okay, I won't make an issue of seniority. But just on the issue of pure talent, my boy Orvis should outrank you plenty. I'd go that far to state. So you pluck your few chords on your flimsy guitar. But see, Orvis has extensive training in a number of significant facets of music. Why, he even Took up several years' lessons in ballet. <laughs> Jeez, heavens to bees. What ballet got to do with country? We don't got no skimpy little gals dancing around dressed in their doo-doos. Not doo-doos, Joe Elvis. Tutus. That shows how ignorant you are to the fine arts. Well, you still done get the idea, I hope. Story of a little hooker named Kate at 16. She worked at a strip joint down on South State Street in Chattown. And what about voice, boy? What about voice? You warble in that tinny country voice you got you. But take more of us. You got him a rich, vibrant, baritone quality to vocalize him. We had him training under Madame Holstein, who sang up on stage there in Denmark for a celebrated period. 
but or doing for me, you strictly restricts him from singing. What wrong, fella? You fears he might not shine over your skimpy voice? Ha! <laughs> you said it, sir. The perfect word, Holstein. Just like my pappy had in his barn. Every time Orb get up to sing, there's laughter in the crowd. Oh, and this one time, this dude done get up, hollers out that Orb sounds like some sad cow mooing and mooing away for herself. That done teach me a good lesson on Orb's vocalizing capabilities. Shoot. How can I reason with you, lad? Well, I tell you what. Tonight, after our gig here, I will take it up with the boys, including your Orv. And we will put it to a democratic vote on to what Orv's title should be. But, in all honesty, I, I can't rightly back him for no high and mighty position here. The next afternoon, late. Looky, bro, I think your worries are at an end with Orr's old man. I just gotta be kidding, Birch. No, sir. See, I knew what he was angling for, so I went over to his motel about noon yesterday after his talk with you. Well, come on in. You, you tell me about it. So I hints around that I is leaning in his direction about up and or, but I continues that knowing he is a man of means, according to Orv, if he see his way to lending the group maybe 3,000 bucks for to buy us some new equipment for sound amplification and such, I tells him we would then be mighty beholden to his respectful person. Well, so the old man turns red and starts a sp 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 sputtering like a used car. He don't promise one way nor to other, just him and haws around. So I tells him, think it all over, and I would meander back in a few hours. So I waits until about four o'clock, knocking on his motel door. Guess what, Joe Elvis? Orv's old man ain't no way there. Orv answers, telling me his pa had to clear out quick like a bunny real unexpected like trouble at one of his oil wells he got to troubleshoot well I says to Orv no big deal when his pa get back he and me can go back into conference once more but Orv st st stutter stutters out that no his old man done tells him looks like a peck of trouble at that there oil well of his. So he has no idea of when he could return. But looks like it's gonna be a heck of a long time. When he pulled out, however, Orf state that his pa declare one he is 100% back world. of Joe Elvis I see it. and knows that you can nudge his son along to certain stage stardom. Thanks a bunch, bro. You see, you really did do some troubleshooting of your own. <laughs>